I first learned about Dr. Biljansky's uh, work in 1999 uh, when a friend of mine, a uh, colleague, uh, the late Patrick McCready Jr., called me and told me there was this very exciting conference that was going to be occurring in in uh, in New York at, um, at at a hotel. It was it was sponsored by uh, a group that was interested in Dr. Biljansky's uh, research and products. And uh, he said I should really, he actually didn't even mention the name Biljansky. He just said, just come to this conference. It's really interesting. If you're interested in cancer and so on, it'll give you a lot of information that you're not familiar with. And I respected him a great deal. And I figured, well, I might as well go. So I came to the conference. And uh, at this conference, it was a bilingual conference. It was both in English and in French. And I met several researchers, clinicians, uh, patients, and others, pharmacists, who were interested in Beljansky's products and in interested in his research. And so there were a number of papers presented, both about the research and his, uh, and also the the, the patients uh, who had been using the products and how well they were doing, a lot of the cancer patients and other patients who were using them. And I listened very carefully and of course, uh, as I said, it was bilingual so I had earphones because many of the lectures were in French. A lot of the people were from either France or Belgium. And I was really fascinated by this. I had never heard anything like this before and I just found it very fascinating. And after I uh, came back from the conference, I got a hold of some of the research by Biljansky and I read through the articles and I just found it extremely interesting that this was a, uh, he had discovered a, uh, some things, some concepts that I had never heard of before and also some products which were relevant uh, for uh, many kinds of patients but especially cancer patients. So at that point, um, after doing some research, I learned that the his daughter, Sylvie Beljansky, had started a company in New York called Natural Source, which uh, sold these products as nutritional supplements, and they could be available to either practitioners or to patients. And that was the point at which I decided to start using them with my cancer patients, or with several of the cancer patients, and I was very, very pleased with the results. So I've been using the products since uh, 1999, um, and actually became the first physician in the United States to actually present the material to other physicians in the United States. I'm a, I've been involved with an organization called ACAM, or the American College for Advancement in Medicine. Uh, they're having their 40th anniversary this year, and uh, in fact, I'm leaving for a conference uh, tomorrow. Uh, and at that conference in 2003, this is now four years after I had been to the 1999 conference and I had been using the products and I had been reading uh, in depth uh, Beljansky's work, I wrote a, uh, I presented a lecture to, to other physicians and so that became the beginning where other practitioners throughout the United States uh, began to, to use the Beljansky products. Uh, after I, uh, I had researched uh, the, uh, Dr. Beljansky's work and had read a number of his articles and became more and more fascinated with it and I had started to use it with patients and had some very good results. Now I use a lot of things with patients, a lot of non-toxic approaches with cancer patients and with other patients. I try as much as possible to use products that will not only not harm patients but will stimulate and enhance uh, the the health healthy cells. So I began after I had done that for a while. I did write a, a, a little paper that was uh, published in a in a, in a little uh, 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 health magazine, and then I presented uh, a lecture at ACAM, the American College for Advancement in Medicine. This is an organization that has been in existence uh, since 1972 and this is their 40th anniversary this year. Uh, and they have two conferences a year where 
doctors present on various cutting edge therapies, therapies that generally are non-toxic and are really quite different from the mainstream uh, medicine which involves using uh, uh, conventional prescription drugs. These are generally supplements, uh, dietary changes, lifestyle changes, and that's the whole theme of all of the different lectures. And I felt that Dr. Biljansky's work would fit very well with this. And so I presented uh, this lecture discussing uh, some of his theories about the development of cancer, uh, his test uh, which involves uh, testing for carcinogenic substances, substances that cause cancer, and then uh, the use of uh, these therapeutic, he really had four specific supplements uh, that uh, I talked about that could be used uh, either in conjunction with conventional therapy or uh, in, instead in some cases of conventional therapy, uh, and uh, it could be done without any harm to the patients. So I presented the lecture, and this was the first one uh, which then, then resulted in a variety or uh, several physicians in the United States beginning to, uh, to start to use this with patients, and also soon led to there being some research in the United States uh, on this, uh, on his products. Well, we have, in our practice, we see a lot of, for example, breast cancer patients. And the breast cancer patients, the general uh, conventional protocol is for a woman in stage one or stage two breast cancer to get a lumpectomy, that is the removal of the tumor, and then radiation, and then uh, often chemotherapy. And then if they have an estrogen, what are called an estrogen positive cancer, which means the cancer tends to be stimulated by the hormone estrogen, then they get drugs which tend to block the estrogen, either the production of estrogen or block the receptors uh, of estrogen. So that's the general protocol. And uh, I am not convinced that this is really the best way, best way for women to deal with the breast cancer. And we wind up seeing a lot of patients who, are, uh, who have the lumpectomy and have decided from, often from their own research that maybe the radiation and some of the other, the chemotherapy was not for them. So they come here and they go on an intensive program and this could involve vitamin C drips and it can involve a lot of other nutrients that tend to be, have anti-cancer properties. Now many of those women will go on the Beljansky products in addition. Uh, to the other products that we've been using. And we have many patients that we've been following for five, ten years or more who have not had recurrences. And that's what the main thing, the, the purpose of the treatment is to try to prevent women from getting recurrence of the breast cancer. So we have many patients who are actually using the Beljansky products. And I think, uh, although I use a lot of things, so it's, it's sometimes it's very hard to be sure which is doing, which is doing what, uh, I, I am convinced uh, that the uh, breast cancer patients who have been taking uh, the Beljansky products, uh, this has contributed to them not getting recurrences. And uh, I've also used the Beljansky products in conjunction with conventional treatment because this, uh, especially the more advanced cases, the metastatic disease, uh, these treatments will tend to be very synergistic with chemotherapy. They work well in conjunction with it. And the two of his products, the product that is de derived from the plant, the Pau Perriera from South America, and the one Rewolfia from, from Africa, uh, these two products both tend to have anti-cancer properties that, uh, that, that Beljansky discovered. And they work very differently from conventional chemotherapy drugs. But he did some studies that suggested uh, that these drugs are synergistic with chemotherapy. And uh, we even have some recent studies here in the United States suggesting, at least in vitro studies and in animal studies, that this is, qu this is the case, that they will work together with them and the effects on uh, stopping the cancer or on uh, helping the cancer to, um, to dissipate or prevent it from recurring or prevent it from, from spreading uh, is, is accentuated by using 
the combination of the conventional treatment and the and the um, Beljansky, those two Beljansky products. Now, in addition to that, some patients who do undergo radiation, uh, Dr. Beljansky had found a product that he developed, um, which is derived from ginkgo biloba, but it's different from the usual ginkgo biloba that you find in the health food stores. It has different properties. Uh, it's these the preparation of it uses different solvents. It's derived from the yellow leaves of the ginkgo during certain time of year rather than green leaves. So it's quite different and has different properties. And it seems to help to regulate certain enzymes in the cells and appears to help to prevent fibrosis uh, from, from radiation. So I re strongly recommend that those patients receive uh, that, this ginkgo product called Ginkgo V, along with radiation when they get it. I think it helps to prevent them from getting radiation damage and fibrosis associated with the, uh, with the radiation. Uh, another product that Dr. Beljansky discovered was he was able to show that certain, he, he had a th certain theoretical things that were very important. He showed that you needed what are called RNA, RNA primers. Um, to affect DNA. DNA are the, uh, are the um, uh, what's in the nucleus of the cell. And, and in order to get that to grow optimally, you need RNA primers. So he discovered that he could use these RNA primers from a non-pathogenic strain of E. coli in order to stimulate both platelets and white blood cells. And one of the main side effects of chemotherapy, uh, or, or a couple of the side effects of chemotherapy, are the uh, uh, reduction in platelets, which could then, of course, lead to bleeding, and uh, reduction in white blood cells, which could in result in impaired immune system functioning, which can even actually also worsen the cancer or cause infections and so on. And so he found that by giving this ginkgo biloba product, which they call ginkgo V, he was able to, um, to help to build leukocytes in the cells and platelets. And uh, there's actually a preliminary study that was done and published by Cancer Treatment Centers of America, which suggested that in a, in a, in a pilot study that this it was quite effective in preventing the oncologist from having to stop the treatment because of low platelet counts. Uh, and Beljansky had shown in eloquent experiments, for example, in rabbit studies, that he could keep rabbits alive after getting a toxic chemotherapeutic drug, uh, cytoxin. Uh, he was able to keep them alive if he gave them these primers, this, uh, the, these E. coli primers, or uh, called real build. Uh, now, it is important to realize that these, th this is what considered to be, in terms of conventional medicine and conventional oncology, that these are preliminary studies, that these are, not, uh, these are not proven studies from the point of view of being accepted by the FDA and, and that be, would be used by conventional oncologists. But to me, uh, if you can find something, even if there are suggestive things in non-toxic substances and cancer patients whose lives are at stake, and if you can use things and, uh, which have uh, extremely low risk and that might be beneficial for them, I tend to recommend them for patients. This is different from many of the mainstream oncologists who basically will not use anything unless it is FDA approved and has gone through all of the millions and millions of dollars of studies that need to be done in order to get it approved. So the, the Beljansky's, uh, the, the natural source cannot make any kind of, of statement, any kind of claim for these products that they are good for uh, reducing, uh, to raising platelets or white blood cells and so on. But the preliminary data indicates that they might very well be and it would be good if, the, if further research could actually prove that they are beneficial. But I feel I use them and I use a lot of other non-toxic things to helpful for cancer patients, uh, even though they are not FDA approved for that purpose. Well, I think that the role that I've played in terms of the legacy of Dr. Beljansky is that um, 
I really was the, as far as I know, I was really the first physician in the United States, do uh, medical doctor in the United States, that has discussed these uh, products uh, with, um, with, with discussed Bel Dr. Beljansky's theories, his, his concepts, the development of his, te his oncotest, which tests uh, for carcinogenic substances, the development of these four products which can be used in the management of cancer patients, that I have been the one who has kind of introduced this both to uh, clinicians in the United States and also to some authors. Uh, Dr. Mort Walker, a, uh, uh, who was a medical writer for many, many years, published many, many books, wrote a, wrote a wonderful uh, book uh, about Beljansky's work uh, called uh, Cancer's Cause, Cancer Cure. And uh, he talks about Beljansky's work and the research. And I he actually was at that conference that I, uh, at ACAM in 2003. And he, uh, this resulted in him uh, becoming extremely interested in the Beljansky products, going over to France and Belgium and speaking to many of the patients who had actually had the treatment. Uh, and uh, really researching very much th this whole area and then writing this wonderful book which describes uh, Beljansky's work and his life and, uh, and, and what's happened with him. So, so I, I think that I've, I've played a, a part in that and I, that's even part of this bigger picture that I've been trying very much in terms of my life work to try to have the healthcare system focus a little bit more not a little bit, a lot more on uh, lifestyle, on healthy living, on use of non-toxic nutritional supplements uh, to help the person's immune system, to help the patient uh, be able to become stronger, and also to help them deal with more toxic approaches in a therapeutic way to prevent side effects and so on. So I think all of these things uh, I have uh, uh, have been trying to do and hopefully have made some mark in, in, in that way. Well, I think there has been some attention given uh, by conventional doctors uh, to the approach that Dr. Beljansky advocated, in part because the conventional approach is not working very well. And we see our are people becoming sicker and sicker using the conventional approach of just trying to uh, wind up taking a pill, a prescription medication for whatever ails them. And really what's happening is uh, here in the United States, uh, the statistics for how, um, how well we're doing in terms of a whole bunch of parameters related to the health of a nation is that we, we're really not doing very well. And, and conventional doctors are often very frustrated and upset and angry that they're really not able to help their patients very well. Um, m many of them just um, appear to be relatively closed-minded and don't want to open their minds to anything that is not FDA approved and that the conventional uh, organizations haven't given their blessing to. But some of them, especially those who are really caring about their patients, have begun to open up their minds and they see uh, many, several of my patients have, have been back to, to conventional doctors and the conventional doctors see how well they're doing and the ones who are a little bit more open-minded will tend to wonder about it and, and, and begin to pursue it. So you find more and more doctors are, are um, and other healthcare practitioners, I don't want to limit it just to MDs or but uh, all kinds of healthcare practitioners are focusing on other things uh, because they think that this is where the future of healthcare lies. I mean, our country is going bankrupt in part because of its uh, inadequate healthcare system, and and the focus of the politicians has been pretty much on who pays for what and how can we can make it cheaper, rather than on realizing that their whole approach of of diagnosing, putting a label on something and giving a prescription drug uh, is, just does not work. We have to look at people's lifestyle, their exposure to toxins in the environment, 
and how we can re reduce the toxins, help them to detoxify, get rid of the toxins, and how we can build patients up as a result of their lifestyle changes, their focus on nutrition, their focus on nutritional supplements, their focus on exercise, on sleeping patterns, on stress management. Those are the things that help to prevent uh, people from becoming chronically ill because chronic illness is really what uh, we are dealing with now. We're dealing with cancer and heart disease and arthritis and all kinds of neurological degenerative diseases. Those are the things that are really making us so sick as a nation, either sick or killing us. And it's only by focusing on the things, that some of the things that, that Dr. Beljansky found so important that we can begin to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps in order to become successful in, um, in improving our health and improving the healthcare system. Dr. Beljansky, after all, really focused, he really put his attention on the environment, much more so than conventional medicine, and there are other pioneers in this area, but he stressed that it was the environment, the carcinogens in the environment that really brought about cancer and that we should be focusing on that rather than just focusing on the genes or focusing on uh, what uh, other medications, conventional patentable prescription drugs would, can be used to help patients. He thought we have to try to get rid of the toxins, we have to try to identify them and get rid of them. And of course his test, the Onco test, which does a pretty good job at identifying carcinogens, this is generally not, um, th this is uh, many companies and many industrial interests are not interested in that. They don't want to identify that because that's going to cost them money by having them not use these things that are currently being used so readily. Well, there have been some, some colleagues, some people who have shown some interest in doing some research into uh, some of the uh, products that Dr. Uh, Beljansky developed. Uh, for example, there was work done at Columbia University, uh, both in vitro studies and animal studies that suggested that these two plants do have strong anti-cancer activities. Um, and then there's another a doctor at the University of Kansas is a friend and colleague of mine who has been doing research on the synergistic effects, both again in vitro studies, which means uh, studies kind of in a test tube, and also in some animal studies, showing this synergistic effect between chemotherapy and the use of these uh, th these these plant products, and appears to really show that they work together very well and improves the results. So. I expect and hope that this will, more research will be done and that gradually uh, products, Dr. Beljansky's products and products similar to his or, or other uh, products that have, that are non-toxic, uh, that are nu kind of nutritional, will be incorporated and used to help patients. To me, Dr. Beljansky was a real pioneer and a very brave, researcher, a very kind and uh, person who was concerned about humanity and he spent, he loved to research and he loved his work and he put his heart and soul into it and he also was so, sort of a bit of a renegade because he, he opposed some of the prevailing dogma at the time. Uh, the head of the Pasteur Institute who's a Nobel Prize winner and also a brilliant man, Jacques Renaud, um, believed that uh, the information biologically only went from DNA to RNA and, th and that was the dogma and anyone spoke against this he was very very uh, antagonistic to so he and Dr. Beljansky didn't get along very well uh, and uh, this, in fact, probably led after a while to Dr. Beljansky leaving the uh, Pasteur Institute and, and working on his own in, in uh, private research. But um, he is really one of the first people that showed that, and, and now it's pretty well accepted, and clearly accepted, that his research that th 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 there was a two-way interaction between DNA and RNA and that the RNA uh, also transmitted information to DNA as evidenced by those uh, 
non-pathogenic E. coli RNA primers, which results in the increased production of DNA in the form of uh, white blood cells and platelets. So he clearly showed, both from a theoretical point of view and also experimentally and, and clinically, that this was a very, very important observation. And um, so it, it, some of his, his concepts are more or less accepted now to an extent, but he really is not given the, 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 uh, giving the credit that he deserves because he was really a pioneer and one of the first, if not the first, to uh, introduce some of these concepts which are now uh, beginning to be accepted in a uh, much more uh, 